Welcome to the testing world. In this session, we are going to cover one assertion. The name of the assertion is response assertion. So as of now, I have a test plan. Inside the test plan, I have a test case, which is thread group. And I want to execute this for the one user. So I set it one and we have two samplers. To display report, I'm going to add one listener, which is view result tree. So now I'm going to response assertion. Response assertion is mainly used when we want to validate any text in result. So I'm going to my assertion and here I'm going to select the response assertion. So that's the body of the response assertion. I want to validate I want to validate response should contains and in the response it should be success so anywhere in the response we should have success in that we should have success text I'm going to clear this I'm running it so here we can see my two requests are hitting and both the requests are getting failed. Why? Because my response assertion is failed. We are asking that success message should be in the response, but we are not getting the success word on the page. That's fine with me because I don't have any success message on these pages. I'm going to the response assertion again, and here I'm setting not contains means in the response we should not have this success message so moving to my view result tree clearing previous result running it again and this time both the requests are getting passed because we are not expecting success message in the result and we are not getting it so normally what we do we are going to check that in response we should not get error or warning message so with the help of the assertion we can validate the response and i'm validating like in response we should never get error or warning and this response assertion is applied on the test case level so it's going to execute on a all the samplers clearing result running it again request one then request two it's applied on both the requests my assertion is working on both the request and still both the requests are getting passed because we are not getting error or warning to view assertion result we have one more listener which is specific to the assertion result so we can add assertion result listener as well so i'm coming over here that i want in response we should not get error so i'm not getting but i'm going to add one more assertion and here i'm expecting warning so now i have added two assertion one is saying that in response we should not contain error and other is saying we should contain warning so here we can set contains now i am running it and still my requests are going to fail but we'll have to check why these requests are getting failed. So request one is getting failed because response assertion is failed. We are expecting warning. We are not getting that. We are expecting warning and we are not getting that. So my requests are getting failed because we are expecting in response, we should have warning, but we are not getting it. I can go to the assertion result listener. And here it also shows that request one is getting failed because you are expecting warning but we are not getting that so this assertion result listener is going to work only for assertions
One more thing we need to notice over here like as of now I have added both the assertion on this test case level so it's applied to the all the request but if I want to validate only in the request 2 I can make it as a child of the request 2 so now for the request 1 we don't have any assertion and for the request 2 we have two assertions clearing result running it again so this time request 1 should pass because we did not set any assertion in that but my request 2 is failed because we have two assertion out of that one assertion is getting failed so the positioning of these elements are very important because with the help of these positioning we can define the scope of this assertion or the scope of the working so that's all we have for response assertion thanks for watching this video